Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, a favorite place to be on the planet every week. I feel so blessed to have these conversations. And man, you guys are ramping it up on YouTube. So thank you so much for taking the time to submit your comments. I tell you every week, I read them, I read them. I respond. I love hearing how this show is changing your life, how the guests are teaching you pieces, showing you things you didn't know before. For those of you who are listening to this in podcast form, but you'd actually like to see what I look like, what my guests look like, come join us and click on subscriptions at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And you could do the visual too. And that's pretty fun. That kind of amps everything up for us visual people. And also, if you're enjoying the show and conversation, this show has been nominated for People's Podcast Choice Award. Please be sure to leave us a review, right? It's so important. That's how people find our conversation. So I love that you click on. And by the way, this show is doing really well in other countries. I'm on, I get a, an email every week that tells me where the show is. It's, you know, for some shows, I'm sure it's like the stock exchange. It goes up and down and up and down, but this show really is doing very well. And for those of you who are not listening in the U S and are listening in another country, I adore you. Uh, the world is so small today. So I'm so grateful to be part of your world. And I'd love, frankly, if you write in too, let me know where you're writing in from and how's it going. How's the show impacting you in the world that you live in? Well, I want to first thank the sponsor to the show, Dr. Dean here, H-E-E-R, and Access Consciousness. I want to thank them for the beautiful work they do out in the world. If you are ripe and ready for some healing and you're ready to do some energy healing, and you're ready to finally know that being different isn't a wrongness. It's actually the beauty of who you came here to be in this life. Check out their work. They do stellar work all around the world in every country. So it's accessconsciousness.com as well as Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N, he, here, H-E-E-R.com. And you can start out real low level or book or an online course, or actually join them at a workshop. And they also do bars energy work, which I'm a facilitator at, so we can facilitate your healing now. So I have a good show coming up, and I'm excited because Simone Butler is here, and she's a professional astrologer. And she's going to talk to you about how to use astrology for knowing where in the world should I be living, what city, what state. <laughs> what country? I think that's really cool. And I know so many people today. I was telling Simone earlier that uh, where I go, the people I hang out with all seem to want to know that. Or if I bring it up in passing, everybody's like, where can I get that done? So I thought, let me bring on the person who can tell you where you can figure these things out. She can help you do that. And uh, She'll be on just a little bit later. And who am I? What do I do out in the world? Well, I work with spiritual entrepreneurs who are ready to write their book and make it into a page turner. I coach you to do that. I've also got a company that takes authors to a guaranteed international bestseller status. And I teach the ultimate visibility formula. I work with amazing clients to show them how they can be interviewed on radio and podcast in 60 days or less, but not just where to be interviewed. I give you all the shows, but also how to be exquisite while you're on the microphone or camera. I myself have been interviewed on over 1000 media outlets. I know all the ins and outs and how to build influential relationships and how to actually get results, not just be interviewed, but get results, sell out workshops, books, get clients. When you're being interviewed, join my class at Debbie D dot net d e b b i d dot net slash visibility love to have you our next class is starting in about six weeks you want to sign up now and uh just check out the testimonies they're pretty stellar do you know how to set up your home or the best place in the world for you to live? Well, my guest today, Simone Butler, is an expert astrological guide. She's got more than 30 years experience in helping people find their purpose and passion. She began her career as an LA fashion editor and has since written for many platforms, including the Stars Scroll and tarot.com. Simone's book, 
and I want to hold this up because this is the one I'm almost finished reading, which is Astro Feng Shui, Making Magic in Your Home and Life, as well as Moon Power, Lunar Rituals for Connecting with Your Inner Goddess. Bring Ancient Secrets into Modern Living. You can read Simone's blogs and learn about her weekly Patreon show. Simone says at astroalchemy.com. Simone, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. That is so cool. Um, I'm going to bounce, I guess, a little bit because I know we're going to talk about where to live, but I just want to start with this, uh, reading this book, and uh, because you and I have done a little bit of work in the past, I'm so fascinated by the ideas here, and I'm already seeing a couple of things. I was like, oh, my back is to the door. I never actually thought about that and I'm so sensitive and I'm amazed I didn't think about that my desk is set to the wall, this is my workspace and my back is to a door. Will you talk about that real briefly right up front? That is a very important thing to, to work with. I mean, some people's offices are set up in such a way, mine is actually a good example of that where there's no other place that I can put the desk than when where my chair faces the the uh, door and one day my cat came in and sort of attacked me out of the blue which is really kind of the reason that this problem this is a problem right is somebody can come from behind theoretically or even your pet and startle you so it's like you've got to have a strong back Mm. And there are cures for that. You can put, you can hang things up like something red, a red tapestry or red is a really strengthening color. So you can, um, you know, kind of doctor it up that way if you really can't rearrange things. But the very first line of defense is to try to do just the opposite where you are facing the door so that when people come in, you are, um, you know, in the power seat. Tell us, right. so you say red. So uh, what do you mean? Can you give a little more description? Like it, what if we can't even hang a red tapestry? What else, what other triage can we create? Oh, well, we you, could, a you could hang a red sweater on the back of your chair. There's any number of clever, creative ways you could get some red at your back, you know, and the idea being, or you could wear something red, of course, or you could paint your chair red for that matter, or I don't know. I mean, is, is what we're looking at here in this photo in today, is this your office? So we're talking about this screen behind you. Well, yes, you know, I use the screen for my podcasts or when I teach my classes purposely to disconnect visually for the viewer, the rest, and to have a really lovely background. I mean, actually what's behind it is nice too, but I don't need people to see the mobile and the, the lamp and the this and that. I like to keep it, you know, more present. Um, and this is my white chair, which is funny. <laughs> but, you know, I wonder what I could possibly put behind here or I mean I, I'm your student you tell me yeah well hang um, a red tapestry or a red sweater on the back of that or get a red chair or you could um, if you really wanted to invest in something new you could get a different screen that has red in it yeah that's way possible interesting okay love it and the other thing so you know mm -hmm. folks when you read these books it's like oh all these little things you don't consider, but you know you want your life to be completely optimal. The other thing, so I thought about a friend who has a stove that has a little bit of a leak. They've had the gas company out, they can't figure out, I don't know if they need a new stove or whatever. It's very faint, but once in a while when I walk in their house, I could smell the leak. And I read in your book, stoves are about wealth. Yeah. Talk about that. Absolutely. That's why they say always keep your burners clean and in working order as well as the oven itself. So if there's a leak there, then 
I would be willing to bet these people are having trouble holding on to money or that it's just leaking out in some way and that, you know, the, our environment is speaking to us at all times. Mm. That's what feng shui is about. That is so fascinating. Uh, so I believe very much in feng shui. And I know that once upon a time, way before I met you, because I would use you, but a long, long, long time ago, when I first heard about it, I was quite young and I had an apartment done. And I remember I wanted to fall in love and they had had me do these things with flowers and colors. And so, you know, I felt honestly, I know in your book, you address that some people feel overwhelmed with the changes. I didn't feel that way at all. I felt really excited about implementing a crystal here, or just these little touches. But I will say I had someone come in my life very quickly after that with great ease. So I believe in this. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're a Cancerian. Just like me, we love our homes. We love fixing them up and changing them and being as cozy and comfortable in them as possible. God, is that the truth? It is the nest, the haven. Yeah. Cannot be cluttered, cannot be chaotic. It has to be like my respite. Every, my bed, I have to buy the, you know, I have to get an expensive, awesome bed. I have to have like my bedroom be a sanctuary, all that stuff. Absolutely. Outside of my place, I will say, uh, there are a lot of overgrown trees and bushes. I find it spectacular. In fact, it's one of the things that captivated me when I came two years ago to see this place. Uh, the, the manager felt I might be turned away looking outside the patio or the bedroom window and seeing all this greenery and not instead the street or something. And I was like, oh my God, are you kidding? I feel like I'm living in a jungle tree. It's awesome. Yeah. Is that, uh, so there's not a ton of sunlight that gets in here. Is that a plus? Is that an impediment to have that much growth going on? I mean, my spirit loves it, but I don't know feng shui wise if that's a cool thing. You know, who cares about feng shui if your spirit loves it? If it were blocking out all the light and your your house, what, your apartment was dark and dingy and you didn't feel a sense of growth and lightness within it, then it would be a problem. But, you know, feng shui is very practical. Mm. It's like you can feel it if you're sensitive. If something is off in your environment, it's just obvious. You know, so it sounds like it's just fine for you. And I think having greenery surrounding a place is, is a plus. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. That makes sense. I can imagine some people walking in here and seeing that and being like, no, they'd want it all cut down and see the street. And for me, it's like, oh, oh. I, lo I love that I can live in Los Angeles and feel that I'm like in some forest somewhere. Yeah. That really works for me. And so I think I'm going to switch because there's so many questions I have for you. I love what you do out in the world. I love the service that you provide. And I think it's fascinating all of what you provide. And by the way, I researched you and I was really impressed because you're on a lot of important sites. You've done a lot of work. Like you have a big amount of beautiful work and connection with community out into the world. I know your books even have beautiful reviews from people. So kudos to you for really aligning with why you're here. And just tell people, so before we get really full into the where to live in the world and how you help people and what we should look for, what are all the services that you offer? Well, first, I just wanted to say, as we were talking about feng shui just now, that the astro part of that is working with the new moons. And that's what my book is about. The new moon is the time every month when the sun and moon join. It's like a seed point for the month ahead. It's the power point. It's when the, the moon is dark in the heavens, but that doesn't make it any less powerful. So those are the times that you work with a particular part of your house. And for those, unlike you and me, who do get overwhelmed by the thought of feng shuiing their entire house all at once, this is a way of taking it in bite-sized chunks. You know, you're working with one room for that month. And so that's how that 
the astrology part, which is very simple to understand the new moons, um, fits in with the feng shui part. So that's something that I, a system that I devised, um, gosh, about 10, 12 years ago now. And, but I've been studying astrology for many years. And so I offer the basic services that most astrologers offer, relationship readings, transit readings, which is like, what the heck is going on in my life for the next, you know, year or so. It's usually about a year's forecast. And just so you know, um, it's not a psychic reading. Some people mix up astrology with other things, or they don't quite understand what astrology is. And astrology is based on the map of the heavens at the moment that you were born. And it's really important to have an accurate time of birth, especially for what we're about to talk about next, mm -hmm. which is the astro locality. Because if you don't have an accurate time within, say, five or 10 minutes, then that particular reading is not going to work for you. There are other readings that we can approximate without the time of birth, but in this reading, we got to have it. The time Let's of say that, so address that for a second. Uh -huh. because, as you know, my boyfriend is adopted. He doesn't know his time of birth. Right. So what, what would you do for somebody like that who still wanted to work with you? Well, we cast what's called a solar chart. That means I'm casting it for 6 a.m. when the sun is on the horizon. That's what we do for a person because there's plenty of people that don't know their time of birth. And so it's better to have a solar chart than to be guessing. Mm -hmm. It's much worse to be guessing and, and have it be wrong, you know, wrong within hours. <laughs> right. And so if, when you say a solar chart, you mean you can still semi-predict, well, this would have been your ascendant and this would be your moon-ish? Well, no. What it does is it gives you the same ascendant and, as your sun sign. That's why we call it a solar chart. Oh. And it's accurate as far as it goes. It's just missing things. Mm. And sometimes people are born on the day the moon changes sign. And the moon changes signs every two and a half days. So it is possible without knowing the time of birth that you may be guessing about the moon sign. But because the moon represents your emotional nature and your instincts and, you know, basically who you are on, on a, a more sensitive, hidden level, it's often, especially if you know someone, it's often pretty easy to figure out which moon sign is, uh, you know, is right. It fits best for you. It's interesting. And the other things you were talking about what you offer, um, have you covered all of that? I want to make sure you get all of that to us. Um, just different types. I, I feel like I'm, I'm missing something. I can tell you one, which is colors. Ah, yes, 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 yes. And that's how I met you, by the way. You came yes. off of stage in an event, and all I knew is this woman, you were so adorable, and I wanted your outfit, although I don't think all the colors would look great on me, but I could have stolen that outfit. It was so awesome. The pants, the top, the sweater, but, I, but it was captivating to, to someone like me who's very sensitive to that, and I love fashion. I love when people have the right clothes on, and so that's how I initially was even attracted to you. And I know in, in our reading, you suggested to me clothes to wear, which, by the way, I've been following every day of the week. So today is Wednesday. You told me to wear green. I'm wearing forest green. Uh -huh. So that's something you offer as well. That's true. I call that everyday enchantment. And I wrote an ebook about that. So it's a way of aligning yourself with what the planetary ruler of each day is and what colors and energies pertain to it such as in fact we met on a wednesday when i happened to be wearing teal and i'm wearing teal again and i put my green um you know background behind me because teal green turquoise these are all colors that relate to mercury and wednesday is mercury's day 
So we want to honor Mercury, the god of communication, on the day that he rules. This is very ancient astrology. This goes back to the Babylonians, mm. which is where astrology began many thousands of years ago in Babylon and Mesopotamia and that part of the world. And it's been lost. Most people have never heard of this. They have no idea that Monday is the moon's day. And yet we have, we talk about, you know, blue Monday or that Monday is a day where people feel very sensitive and very, uh, you know, more in touch with emotions. And, and it's true, you know, especially for us cancers. And then you, you take it to, to that level of, Oh, what's my ruling planet? And therefore, what is my day? And this is then becomes my power day. And you can, you know, work with it on that level as well to, to consciously dress in the colors and the gems and the, the um, fabrics and everything of that planet. That's great. I love that because I teach visibility out into the world. And as I'm listening to you, I'm realizing that's an aspect I never considered for my clients before is how important it is. So now they've got all these tools. They've got they've had all this inner healing work around visibility. They also have the strategy and the full on pro technique, how to get out there. Ta-da! The next piece is how you're presenting yourself in the fabrics and the gems and the, you know, or if it's guys, whatever beads right now, that's really big for guys to wear and put the clothing and the style. And it's like, I love this. It's so complimentary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love art and design and beauty. And as you said, I'm a for former fashion editor and I often offer events here at my house in San Diego where people come and we do rituals. We talk about astrology, look at people's charts, and then we make collages because I'm really big on vision boards. I do them in a slightly different way than most people know about. And it becomes part of a very deep process of identifying, getting in touch with what your subconscious self really wants, mm. and then creating a visual image that speaks to that. Oh boy, that's so amazing. Okay. Well, uh, so I'm big on that. So I'll, <laughs> I'll stay in touch with you about that. Cause I've, I've got one still hanging that I created a year and a half ago easily. I still love to look at my vision board. It's still, there's something, there's an energy attached to it that when I look at it and the reminders and the words and the visuals, it's like, oh yes, I am creating that. And a lot of that's been created and here I'm still headed. So it's an exciting, exciting way to create a, an energy, I think, out in the world. And so speaking of world, let's talk about astrolocality or astrocartography. For anybody who's not heard of that, will you briefly explain what does that mean? Why would sure. anyone do that? Well, it's a way of taking your natal chart, which is the map of the heavens on the day you were born, and relocating it to different places throughout the world as if you were born in those places. So there are some areas of the world that are more intense in either good, bad, or indifferent, you know, but just more intense for you than others. And there are some that are just sort of neutral. So astrolocality will show you the different lines. And when I first talk with people before I do the reading for them, I ask them to fill out a form telling me, first of all, what kind of climate and terrain are you interested in? Because I don't care if you got the best line in the world, if it's going through, um, you know, upper Siberia <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> and you don't want to live there, obviously. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> or like in, I hope you don't mind my sharing this point, but one of the places that came up as favorable for you was Berlin, Germany, right? Now, you happen to have a good line through there, and yet, for whatever reasons, and you can talk about that if you want or not, but it's not a place that you would consider living, right? And yet, 
there are ways that you can emphasize different areas of your life through mm -hmm. astrolocality. Let's say you're looking for love. Well, you might want to go to a Venus line. Venus is love. And that shows where your natal Venus, the Venus that, where Venus was when you were born, where that's most prominent throughout the world. And there's different, there's a Venus Midheaven, which is Venus to your career point, bringing, Venus and Jupiter are what, what's called the two great benefics. And benefic means positive and favorable. And so unless, this is where it gets really complicated. Some people have, you know, uh, a Venus or Jupiter in their natal chart that's not very well configured, in which case, those might not be the best lines for them. But in general, Venus and Jupiter lines are the ones you want to be on, and also sun lines. Like for you, you have a sun line. Your sun in Cancer is running right through LA where you live. This is why you feel so much in your element there. It's because the sun is your life purpose. It's your radiance. And it, this is one of the most, quote unquote, visible lines that a person can live on. So here you are, you gravitated to it and you have now found your niche there. That is, thank you so much. That is so interesting to me because I will say growing up in New York, which you said was also a strong point for me, but I've no plans to go back and live there because you said it right up front, climate, done with winters. We'll yeah. never do a winter again. I grew up at a young age through my young teenage ages dreaming of moving to LA and I had never set foot here. Wow. That's all I knew. I was so powerfully drawn to move out of New York and come here sight unseen Wow. So my first experience stepping off a plane was checking out colleges, choosing USC, and they chose me, going to performing arts, and suddenly, boom, here I was. And it's like, I may buy a home other places. I may move to Northern California sometime and also have a house there because I love it as well. But I, I really love it here yeah. <laughs> for many, many reasons. So that is so cool that even at a time I didn't fully understand what intuition was or gut responses, I was still responding positively. Well, the sun is an especially important planet for you because you have Leo rising in your chart and the sun happens to rule Leo. So not only is it, you know, the sun is always an important planet for everybody, but it's doubly so for you because it's, it's what the ancient astrologers would call the captain of your ship. <laughs> it's an, a kind of archaic term for the planet that rules the ascendant. And it's your power planet. So in order to really be in your power, living on a sun line is crucial. And as when we talked before, I mentioned that the same line runs up through the Bay Area. And you said that you weren't interested in living in San Francisco, but now you're saying Northern California, which is also that same line. So it's, you know, obviously it's going to be somewhat different. There are mitigating factors up there that you don't have down here and vice versa, but it's the same line. So it's also a great place for you to be. I love it. Yes, exa exactement. It doesn't have to be San Francisco. I'm not drawn there, but I can tell you, I don't even want to tell people the city because I feel like if I tell people the city I love up there in Northern California, everyone will move. Oh. I, I will say I got an Airbnb once after a workshop at a city, a town I'd never heard of before. And I was blown away. I was like, oh, this is so heaven. It's a city. It's close enough to San Francisco, but not in San Francisco. It's surrounded by forest and lakes and water. It's upscale. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. I love beauty and luxury. Um, it was a, a very sophisticated town, sophisticated restaurants, had a lot of health food stores. I was like, 
I have landed in Eden. And it's the first time I'd considered that before. Oh, and the weather was good. It was unlike San Francisco that's very cloudy. It was right. quite sunny and summery. Mm -hmm. So for all those reasons, yes, I definitely feel that there's a place, at least one, I'm sure there's more, that oh, I would yeah. fall in love with. So we're going to just take a quick break, but I hope you're starting to realize a little bit some of the possibilities. When we come back, we're going to get deeper in this, and Simone's going to show us how, what a map looks like. What does your cartography even potentially look like? And all the lines, and it's pretty cool. I can't wait to see it as well. So this is the Dare to Dream podcast, and I'm so grateful that you're tuning in and listening. And as my gift to you, I offer three months free of the Thinkific business platform that allows you to create, market, sell, and deliver your own online courses. You can get the tools super easy and turn your expertise into a money-making career. Go to thnk.com cc slash deb for your free subscription. That's T-H-N-K dot cc slash deb. And if you're tuning in after we've started, this is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream. I'm interviewing Simone Butler. She is an expert astrological guide with more than 30 years of experience. You want to go to astroalchemy.com. .com. So I want to just sum this up before we get started and looking a little bit at maps. From what I think I understand uh, in everything that I've been reading, that astro locality is actually a modality that someone like you in astrology uses. It shows how moving to another country or location is like moving to another part of our birth chart. Yes. Our birth chart can be spread across the planet, starting from our exact time and place of birth. And this shows just where all of our planets are signs, our houses are going to lay out geographically, and the place of our birth is in our ascendant house or first house, and to the left and right of it, or depending on how you're watching me, <laughs> left and right of it are all the other signs and houses. So for example, if, let's see if I get this right, if Texas is in my Leo ascendant birth chart, California will be in the cancer part of my chart? I, I wouldn't go too far down that road, Debbie. Okay. <laughs> That's, I, I don't think you're quite, and I wouldn't expect you to because it's a complex thing, but that's not exactly how it works. But when you see the chart itself, when I put it up, I will explain to you more how, how it works. But I, I, I do wanna give credit to Jim Lewis, who actually developed astro cartography or astro locality, I forget, I guess cartography is what he named it. And this was only just in like the early 90s that he developed this system. He's deceased now, but he is the, the grandfather of this system. So prior to that time, it's not like this is something ancient that comes from the Babylonians, right? right. This is a modern way of interpreting the chart and it really does work. It's kind of amazing when you go to these different places and lines, you know, like I have a Pluto line through um, Arizona and I, I lived in Sedona for about two years and it turned me inside out. That's Pluto. It was very intense. It was like, I love the land there. I had such incredible healings there, but it was very hard to live in that place. And so it kind of has a reputation for chewing people up and spitting them out, even if they're not on a Pluto line there, but really? I was. Yeah. So I didn't last long there. Okay, cool. So let's deep dive. I'm ready. Show us, show us the way to where we ought to be living. And what does this look like? Okie doke. Let's view solar maps. And here we are. Okay, we're starting here with Europe. That's the first map that happens to be up for you. And let's look right here at this. Can you see where I'm um, indicating this line? 
Uh, do I see where you're indicating? Along? I'm I'm moving my cursor along this line. Um, whoops, in um, that says Jupiter ascendant, and it goes up through Florence and Verona. Oh my God, I'm so happy. You can you see? My I can't see it, but you can just keep speaking because people will be listening to the podcast as well. So just describe for those okay. who can't see. But I can't tell you you starting out in Italy, like uh -huh. without a doubt. Um, I'm so drawn to that country. I I'm ready to like. Where do I buy a house? Right. I love it there. Well, and that's because you have a Jupiter ascendant line there, which is one of the most favorable lines to have. Now Jupiter does rule travel first and foremost. So I think it's important that you would go there and travel as much as possible near and along that line and really determine whether you it's a line that you want to live on. I think you would do really well there. Mm -hmm. You would learn a lot. Jupiter mm -hmm. is all about expansion and growth and learning. Um, and some people do well living on a Jupiter line, but at the very least, it's just a very great place for you to travel to. And, uh, and so as, as you can maybe can or can't see on this map, um, it goes straight through uh, Florence and Verona. So those are the two places I would start with. Although the way this um, astro locality works is the entire country of Italy is really colored by this line. Yes. And you're still going to have favorable Jupiter energies, you know, in Rome, in Milan, you know, Genoa and other parts of, of Italy as well. So it's definitely a lucky place for you, regardless of whether you end up living there or owning land there. It's just a great place for you to be. Awesome. That's the greatest news ever. <laughs> really. Now, just while we have this map up, I'm um, the only other lines that you have through Europe go down um, from through France. It will actually, they start up in this, uh, starts up in London. It's a Mercury Midheaven line and it travels down into, um, down uh, Spain and uh, France and Spain. So Mercury Midheaven is also a travel line. Mercury and Jupiter are both lines of exploration. Uh, have you been to London? I have. And, and how did you find it? How do I find it? Oh, well, um, amazing. Did you I don't want to live there. I can tell you right now, I don't feel a call to live there. It's nothing yeah. like what I feel in Italy. Right. I, of course, loved it. And I mean, history and yeah. did a million amazing things. Yeah, I enjoy it very much. Well, a Mercury line is very stimulating. It's very mental. It's very, it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much to see and do. But it, it's not necessarily a relaxing line in the sense of like, and plus, of course, the weather is such that you probably wouldn't want to live there for that reason alone, right? That's correct, yes. And yet, if there was something you wanted to study or um, learn about, boy, that's the place. Now, mm -hmm. here's another thing to know about this system that's fascinating is the city, um, and also, it applies to people born there, like people that are born in or near London or from England could play a role in your life through bringing you um, startling new concepts and information and that sort of thing. So that's another way that this type, this system works. You don't have to physically go to this line you can meet people from this line or the general vicinity of it who can really teach you something important. Fascinating, I love that. That's like the red piece in the back of my chair. I don't gotta change anything. I could just do a little bit of triage and it all works. So I don't even have to go to London. I can have someone from London come to me, disseminate information and boom, life change. Yeah, now there's another line here and it's Mars Descendant. Descendant is the point of partnership and other people. 
And Mars is considered to be one of the malefic planets. It's a little bit trickier of, um, of an energy. So a Mars line is something you, you have to examine very carefully to make sure that you're not going to be going to a part of the world where you are, where there's strife or where you're going to get into trouble <laughs> in some way. So, especially when it falls on the point of other people, you can fuss and fight with people on, on a Mars line. So, um, if I don't know if people can see this, but where Mars and Mercury cross, which is southern France, is uh, when the lines cross, then you really got a, a little vortex of power for good or, or ill. And Mercury's communication, Mars is is action energy and sometimes fighting so that would be an area to be especially um careful of like let's just say that you and your boyfriend decided to take a trip to southern france well you might it, it might be very stimulating <laughs> but you might also fall into arguments there mm. which could be you know interesting on a temporary basis or you might find that people there the way they think or uh you know the way they communicate like i know in southern france people don't speak english as much as they do say in the big cities like paris it, it could be a language problem that you run into that frustrates the heck out of you because you don't speak french right mm, i do not right so that would be if i were looking at the whole uh, world for somebody and pinpointing places where there could be trouble for one reason or another or where they probably would want to avoid living in that place or spending a lot of time there that would probably be one that i would choose for you is southern france very interesting and especially because i'm a certified wine specialist so one of the things besides travel that's so big for me is also the idea of traveling to some destinations for wine. Obviously, Italy would be amazing. Spain would be amazing. I'm a specialist in those countries. France. And so to hear you say specifically Southern France, I mean, I will pay attention to that. Yeah. I would be very curious to hear, you know, what happens if and when you go there, because I, the only way to, to really, it's like the proof is in the pudding, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, it's not a terrible line that I would say, oh, don't go there at any cost because you're going to get involved in warfare or whatever. <laughs> it's more just it, things could be frustrating there for you. And so I would be curious to hear how that's going to play out if indeed you go there. Okay. Well, very good. It's really noteworthy because I, I, I don't know about you guys listening, but I will say for me, you know, the juxtaposition of where everything lines up, that might now not now be on the top of the bucket list. You know, if the, why yeah. even bother if there's going to be issues? There's so many beautiful places in the planet before that to go see. I want to talk a little bit with uh, astrolocations because it can determine things. And you tell me, Simone, vacation destinations, wedding destinations, yeah. places to relocate because they each have their own unique characteristics. Talk a little bit about that. Well, when you said that, I just remembered uh, what happened some years ago. A client of mine had, her, had me do her astrolocality and she was very curious about Ireland. She has heritage from Ireland, you know? And it's a Neptune line for her. And this was many years ago. And, you know, as astrologers, we learn and grow. And <laughs> sometimes, you know, I, like at the time I said to her, well, just be really careful when you go there because Neptune is known to be kind of hazy daisy. You know, you aren't seeing clearly, you're not making really um, intelligent, decisions, etc. You can fall into addictive patterns. This is the downside of Neptune. Well, she went there and had the most amazing spiritual experience of her life. Hmm. And she, so that's the upside of Neptune. You see, Neptune can bring you in touch with the, the magic 
of the land or, or the spirits, the fairy sprites or whatever it is and the ancestral energies of that place is that was the primary, um, you know, thing she experienced. Now, what it would have been like if she moved there is who knows. But the truth is that in traveling there, she had this profound spiritual experience. So that this is where it's very hard to know which way is it going to go. Is you know. So I try, I try to present both possibilities, but you know, there's there's fate, there's free will, there's a lot of, of things that astrologers can't know. We're giving you our best educated guess as to how these energies are going to be for you, but nobody knows for sure. Okay. You know, that's pretty big, how uh, things can go one way or the other. And so when somebody comes to you, I know there was a couple other places you had mentioned for me besides, you know, Italy, which thrills me to no end. Also, Western Portugal, a place I've never been, a language, mamma mia, but uh, still fascinated to go there. Western Ireland, Berlin, Germany, still fascinating to me. Although I understand from having armchair traveled there that because it's got a huge uh, culture, very free-spirited, late-night parties, lots of art, lots of expression, great food. Like, I, I actually also understand, I mean, um, that I, I see the potential of how I might enjoy there. I still don't see myself living there, but I would love to go explore Stockholm, Sweden. That's really interesting. And the southern tip of New Zealand, for me, near, boy, what a name, Inver Cargill. Right. No clue where that is. Yeah, me neither. Well, it was the only city labeled on the map <laughs> which, <laughs> that was anywhere near there. So that's why I mentioned it to you. But, uh, you know, in, in looking, you just mentioned Portugal and um, Ireland. And I, so I put up the map for that area and it's a sun mid heaven line. Now, this is a very visible line for you. And because you're the visibility queen, mm. I, that's one reason. And we already have seen that the sun, uh, you're on a sun line where you are now in LA. And so here we have another high visibility sun line going down through the very Western part of Ireland and Portugal. So what does that mean? Well, maybe you get your, your books do really well there, or you go on tours there and people love you. Um, I mean, there's just so many ways that this could manifest. You don't, again, have to physically go there. Maybe you have connections with people from these parts of the world who end up promoting you and getting your work out to the world or advising you on your career mid heaven is the place of career in the chart so it would be worth visiting those places if you're wanting to just explore the world and see you know portugal is quite the um the haven for americans these days hmm. it's one of the top place for expatriates that <laughs> what a time to be saying that um, just a year before an election. So <laughs> I may see all there. Uh, that's amazing. And other parts of Africa, because I did also ask about Africa. I would love to go there. And you said specifically Southern Morocco, Mauritania, Guinea, Tunisia, Nigeria. Wow, wow, wow. So yeah. Astro locality. So for people who are interested, and I think we can take this down now, and thank you so much for this. Oh, okay. You don't want to, want me to look at Africa? Um, I, I think in the last minutes we have together, I want to oh. ask some other questions. Okay. For, but thank you, my love. Thank yeah. I think gives everybody a really yummy idea of what's possible. For people who are interested in this, in this astro location for themselves, I want to just address some other ideas of how this can be used, because I really find this fascinating what people can come to you for, 
like for business, for attracting clients, or for pursuing education, or I want to improve relationships, I want to travel, as you mentioned, or I want to expand my creativity. Talk about the ways people can use astrolocality. Oh, yeah, you can combine it, too, with the transit reading, because let's say that you're looking to expand your business in a new direction, and you want to make contacts in different countries. You can figure out not only the timing for when is best to be doing that, but the countries that are potentially going to be most receptive to what you have to offer. So you can use astrolocality for business in that way. You can use it for relocation. If you just want to travel and have a fantastic or a spiritual experience, you know, where you're traveling to, there's any number of ways you can use this. Simone, forgive me, because I'm getting a massive download for you. Yeah. I really hope you have a package called Astro Mastery. And I'm for real. I do this with clients all the time, but I hope you have an astro mastery because I'm listening to you. And what I'm thinking about is the package that I think would be the most appealing. And again, I don't know your services. Is it the fact that you can do the feng shui of the house, which I know is tremendous what that can create and getting everything in order. And then you, it's sort of like within the home as well as from outside the home. So within the home and out into the world, what a package that you can help people clean up their shit in their home, get everything aligned so they can create exactly what they prefer with great ease and with mastery. And then when they're ready to go out in the world, where should I be living for my career, my money, my health, my relationships, my love, everything that I want to be doing and my greatest joy and happiness. That seems like, um, a, it's not a trifecta, it's a double ecta or something, but it seems incredibly powerful of an offering to people. Is that something that people have come to you for just because I'm on fire right now? Well, I, ha I do not have a package called Astro Mastery, although I love it. Uh, you're so great with coming up with, in fact, the, the whole idea of a hot spots reading, what we're offering as a special to your listeners, that was your term, hot spots, right? I love it. So you're so good with these sorts of things. You just get on fire and you suddenly see it all comes together. Also, you know, your sun is conjunct my Mercury to the exact degree, which is why we've connected so strongly. And so you have an ability to do that for me. I don't know if you do, I, I am, would imagine you do that for others too, but you really have zeroed right in on what I have to offer. So I'm so grateful for that. Well, it excites the hell out of me. Yes, I, I do this for clients in private sessions all the time. I mean, I teach classes, but we do private sessions. And thank you, you know, universe for downloads. But I am so excited about what you do. I really am. And I want you to talk about, thank you for bringing up the hot spots because I will share and give you gifts and tell you to go do things and then I forget. So tell us what about the hotspots? What are you offering people today? How can they work with you? What are they gonna get? Right, well, what we will do is I've given you a link to offer that's special to your listeners. It takes them to a hidden page on my website in which only you will get this special deal, the um, hot spots reading, which is normally 150, is only 125 for your listeners. And what it involves is first you'll fill out a very short little questionnaire that says what kind of climate and terrain you're interested in, or what area of your life you're wanting to emphasize. Like, is it health? Is it family? Is it love is it you there can be more than one but we need to know what you're really looking for and what you really don't want if you got to be by water i need to know that you know so then after i get all of that we'll we'll chat on the phone we'll look at some maps and narrow it down to three locations for which i will produce a special report for you that breaks it down those three locations and I sent you some of those 
So you know what that is. It's a report, people. It's not going to be like two bullet points. You're really going to get fully fleshed out why that location and what in that location and more. 100%. Yeah. And just so you know, sometimes there are downsides. Sometimes it's not just totally free and clear. This is it. Go for it. Sometimes it's like, well, here's this influence, which is also a little bit of a caution. So just to be aware that, you know, that may show up for you as well, but I'm going to do my best to find you the absolute best places um, throughout the world or just this country that uh, for your particular needs. So that's what that special. Oh, that's huge. Awesome. I love that. And I love that they get to fill out a form too. So yeah, for some of us, obviously terrain is important, or maybe you want to stay close to your family or right. something or job or something's up. But you know, there's, there's so much more. I mean, there's so many elements that go on in somebody's home. So the hotspots, tell us where do we go? What is the URL for that? Well, that is the link that I gave you. So you'll have to um, put that somewhere that people can find it. Let's see if I can find my dear Simone so I can say this on the podcast out loud right now. But I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, that this is, let me see if I can pull this up. Um, and you can look too, but I, w I really want to say it out loud so they have it while we are but uh because i think it's the and i want them to get the special thank you for being patient okay, here it is yay it is um http colon slash <laughs> slash astro alchemy that's a l c h e m y dot com slash hot spots. Okay, cool. So it is basically what I had read earlier slash hot spots. So if you want the special for dare to dream only, man, do it, do it, do it. You know, go get your astro info today. What a deal. And again, that's astroalchemy.com slash hot spots. So you could be hot in your spot right now. <laughs> this is Dare to Dream. We're at the very end, my dear. Thank you so much for all you brought. And what are you next, Dare to Dream, Simone? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, my goodness. I'm looking for my next place to move to. And, of course, I have some in mind. And I'm intending to visit them. And my dream is an eco-village, to live in a village atmosphere on the land, and be connected to artistic, wonderful people, uh, like-minded folks, and have a sense of family, but with my own private space. So, Have you looked into Fair Fairfield, Ohio? No. <clears throat> it is a, it's a community. It's an actual city and a community, and they do TM, and their entire culture is predicated on community, uh, meditating. They've got, I mean, from children on up, school systems, the entire thing, some very prevalent transformational names that you know live there. I don't know that popped in when you said looking for a place like that, but check out your lines and let me know if there's any congruence there. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I definitely want to live in an earthen home. I have studied earthen building for a long time, and as a cancer, there is nothing more wonderful than being inside warm, curved, earthy walls. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I feel you, girlfriend. Well, <laughs> thank you, Simone, for coming on and sharing your brilliance today on Dare to Dream. It's really been a pleasure. Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for having me. I end today's show with this quote from Lee Goldberg. Astrology is like a weather report. It tells you what conditions you're likely to face in the future. If the weatherman says it's probably going to rain, you bring an umbrella. If you follow that advice, you won't get wet. Again, the special that Simone is offering, if you'd like to know where in the world should you be living, is astroalchemy.com slash hotspots. 
in next week's Dare to Dream, I'm featuring Brandy Alessandra. She's one of the owners of the only medically licensed luxury plant medicine resort in Costa Rica called Rhythmia. Tune into this enlightening transformation conversation each week on Dare to Dream. Remember to subscribe. You can also get the YouTube videos at youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. And remember the secret of success is having the courage in the first place.